Hello, my sweet and lovely Aries. This is your horoscope for November 2024. And November is going to be sweet month, <laughs> packed with planetary movements. And of course, that will translate into our lives. You will most likely to feel the shift in the you know topics of your life, in activities in your life. All these things will be in October and all of us will feel this sort of uh, shift and the background also information, what's going on in our mind, what's going on in our lives and also our spiritual growth. Now, November starts exactly from the beginning on 1st of November, new moon in uh, your 8th house. Now, November, kind of a financial for you because, you know, both of your financial houses in your chart will get activated by new moon and full moon. Now, new moon will happen on 1st November at nine degrees meaning those of you who are born around 29th of march plus or minus five days will be affected the most but of course all of us will get the news now new moons are about all about new you know new beginnings new stories and this new moon will be amazingly supported by saturn planet of hard work long-term results and solid ground you know foundation there now saturn supporting that new moon whatever you will start in terms of your finances it might be your let's say new job or new position or anything actually related to your finances but most likely it will be happening around some other people's money not your money because eight house rules other people's money that come into your life like for example bank money if you're taking a loan and you might actually take up a loan around first of november uh, you know, around this new moon, or it might be some financial support, um, like alimony, if you are in divorce, for example, or it might be also about sort of educational financial support for your education, uh, like scholarships, whatever is there like happening um, related to money, and also insurance, for example, also, um, eight house, you know, it's also about inheritance. Uh, now this new moon uh, happening in those houses it might actually those things might come into your life and saturn supporting that new moon you know will make sure that those things will stick to you almost forever <laughs> because saturn is a long term you know it's it's aimed for a long term result and it puts the solid ground there and it will stay there unshakable almost undestroyable <laughs> so that's why around this new moon it's amazing to start new things you know, related to um, whatever is happening in your life related to money. Now, Saturn will be in your 12th house and it indicates it might be also related to something which is far, somewhere far, like you, you might be investing into some business which is a foreign land, like in, I don't know, in hotel business or um, some hospital business because like building something because saturn is also you know a planet of construction and it might indicate that you you might be investing into some construction somewhere very far or if it's a house that you like buying it might be also somewhere not near you it will be far from you not necessarily somewhere abroad but somewhere which is which will need you know take a plane take a flight somewhere, you know, which is far. Now, also 12th house, uh, it's all things related to uh, rest, you know, because it's the last house and that's where we crave for sort of retreat or recharge. We need alone, private time, privacy time. And around this new moon, you might be buying up, booking some tickets for those kind of um, retreats or recharging sort of activities uh you might be going to some places which is like calm and quiet and more secluded like islands somewhere near water like which is soothing and all the stuff like you know and you might be planning your next trip around this new moon for some of you guys it might be about not even money but it might be about conception because eighth house is a house of mystical you know all things mystical all things magical and new moon happening in your eighth house it might indicate to your health situation or conception specifically because conception is a mystical process and you, you know you might find out actually <laughs> around this new moon that you're pregnant or if you had some such plans of like non-traditional ways of conceiving this will be your new moon try to do around this new moon this new moon might actually help you to pave the path you know for your a fertility journey and for success because saturn but with saturn you will need to work hard of course meaning like you might be uh 
searching long for right uh, specialist, you know, during your like fertility journey or conception journey. And you might be trying to um, look for better like options, doctors, hospitals, clinics and all the stuff, you know, but Saturn will also make sure that you will get the best and you will get the result. That's the most important. Now, it house is also all about health. It might be that if you've been struggling with some sort of illnesses, diseases, this new moon comes in and might bring you a magical healing, sort of mystical healing. Because at the end of the day, it has all things related to, uh, you know, uh, magic. And here, some healing processes are coming. And plus, eight house also rules all things like psychological, our um, mental state also here, uh, esoterics are here. So you might be, if you are, you know, if you don't have such like, let's say, any problems related to health or like money, then it might be that you will quite heavily get invested into esoteric knowledge, like astrology, um, tarot cards, or anything like numerology. You might get so much interested that you might start learning. <laughs> or you might take up some courses because Saturn indicating indicates here long term sort of activity. So you might actually be here in this sort of topics, esoteric topics, spirituality for a long haul, my dear Aries. And you know, because of all these things, you might need some sort of isolation for a long period of time with this Saturn here, because Saturn is exactly in your isolated house and you might be craving for a long time, you know, or time with yourself, maybe to study these things like astrology, numerology, all things, spirituality, or like meditation as well here, everything like Pilates, yoga is all here. Now, uh, if it's a health situation, then it might also, you know, need you to stay some time in a hospital. Uh, because Saturn is exactly in your like hospital house, 12 house rules, all places that need isolation. And it might actually require, but because it, this new moon is amazingly perfect one, no worries around the results of whatever you will be doing, like medical procedures. Now, for, for the most of the month, like whole November and even up to December, some of the days, we have Pluto, planet of transformation, <laughs> opposing Mars. Now, Mars is, you know, planet of activities and also war. It's our engine. It's our motivation and power. Now, this aspect will be exact on 3rd of November. So avoid this day, 3rd of November, to do anything, actually. Literally anything. Try to take it off, I don't know, and just relax <laughs> during this day. Now, Pluto opposing Mars, it's a bit of a harsh, you know, aspect and and Pluto is the you know ruler of that new moon that happened on 1st of November and getting Mars in opposition now Pluto will be in your house of career social status and Mars will be in your house of home and family now Mars is your ruler my dear Aries and you know those of you who are especially like born towards end of the Aries season will feel this opposition the most but all of us will feel no doubt on that, <laughs> but most directly, uh, especially those of you who are born by the end of the season, Aries season. Now, uh, because Pluto and Mars will be opposing each other on the last degrees of their signs like that are um, situated in. Now, uh, you know, this opposition is most likely about um, sort of relationship. Oppositions are always about relationship. Sort of there is a tension between you and your family member might be, or between you and your boss or manager might be, or um, between you and your father as well, could be. And specifically also mother here because Mars is in your fourth house, Pluto is in your 10th house. Now 10th house is our father, fourth house is our mother. Um, it might be them who will have a tension between each other and it will affect you, of course, directly. And you will get involved sort of there trying to uh, mediate their situation. Or if it's not uh, anything related to your family and your manager, like direct uh, your boss, then it might be a situation related to career and immigration you might have a hard time to choose between your home situation <laughs> or where you base let's say whether to immigrate or not whether to move some other place or country or move from one home to another or from one apartment to another and also this will be linked to your social status like uh, 
it might be about your wife or your husband and maybe it's them who will oppose this idea of moving somewhere or changing let's say your job could be um there might be like some things going on which will have you to choose actually sides and the better option actually to wait whole november because this aspect will be active whole november but exact on 3rd of november so try to avoid this day but the best decision will be to actually try to understand the other party and try to you know um come to um middle ground let's say <laughs> now this situation between pluto and mars will be sort of kind of saved by a bunch of other planets like neptune mercury and uh uranus now neptune is a magical planet it's the planet of imagination it's whatever it touches it makes it soft it makes it sort of rosy pinky <laughs> and here neptune will try its best to mediate between those two pluto and mars actually all other bunch of planets will do the same like mercury in your eighth house and uranus also which will be situated in your another financial house second house now uranus and mercury they will be in your financial houses and with finances you are fine my dear aries it seems like everything is good everything is normal whatever your decision there like buying house selling house changing home or immigrating somewhere or changing a job or whatever is that or building a house <laughs> so you know um mercury and um uh, uranus indicate that financially you are stable financially you have all the resources to do whatever there is on your mind especially related to your family things your real estate situation your career situation now neptune will be in your 12th house telling you to actually uh, listen to your intuition so those planets all of them combined they are they are sort of savers you know and they are telling you trust your intuition trust your gut my dear aries once in a lifetime <laughs> try to listen what is your heart telling you what is that intuition is trying to whisper into your ears now that will be the best actually um uh, strategy there now november 4th your ruler my dear aries mars moving into your fifth house now this is one of the biggest transitions also that is happening in november november will be packed with sort of all transitions it's crazy now uh, Mars moving into your fifth house for the next two months. It's the perfect time for love, especially if you're single. Mars will give you that drive, will give you that sort of a passion, sort of a um, hunting, <laughs> chasing abilities. But also, uh, Mars will be quick to fall in love, quick to you know to like someone and all these things. So here, take good care of your pace. Actually, how fast you are doing things. And with who you're mingling, let's say, because Mars will give you plenty of opportunities to go out and find um, perfect fit for you in terms of partnership. You know, love partnership is the fifth house, especially those of you who are single. Now, uh, for some areas, it might be totally about business. You might actually in November start up some business, sort of whatever it is related. It might be media or it might be uh, like a physical store, um, shop, whatever it is. You might open the doors of your business or you might think start thinking about having owning your own business if you're not yet starting but mars here indicates that you will do that and most probably it might be related to some artistic things like acting or singing sort of creativity things because it's a fifth house the you know it's and uh, they are mars is moving into leo and you know leo is the sign that you know they need attention and sort of uh you want you would want to show what you have with your talents with your creativity so it might be actually like a showcasing to the whole world it might be related to media you might start off a new social um sort of project like social media projects like on instagram or youtube um, whatever is there now fifth house is also house of kids now those of you who have kids or who doesn't <laughs> this topic will be uh you know hitting up because this house rules our kids and if you don't have them that you might then it might be your planning and mars comes here and actually gives you that desire to have kids or to if you have them then then there's a lot of errands running around like with these kids kids things like i don't know their university education health and all the stuff like 
all the things you might get so busy caught up with all the things that related to your children if you have them and if you don't then it might be your planning and or even like choosing some things like if you're pregnant already then it might be like buying all the stuff for your uh future uh new family member my dear aries uh, in all in all mars and fifth house it's so amazing placement to have it so use this placement because fifth house is the house of joy you know it's the house of sort of where our heart feels the most uh peace and what we want to do it's all about our hobbies it's all about our love for ourselves and for life so now mars firing up all those things for you um during the next two months now mars in december i think will go retrograde so do whatever is that there that you're planning that i just mentioned in those areas of your life in november because in december it goes retrograde pretty for a long time um so better you know start all the things that you're on your mind now in november now 15th of november we have saturn another big transition there going direct finally because saturn was retrograde meaning moving backwards slowing down since 29th of june now it's almost was half a year a retrograde like moving backwards of saturn but now it turns direct motion now amazing because um saturn needs to move further you know <laughs> from your 12th house because saturn in your 12th house a uh, whole this what is um uh, uh, a year and a half almost and another year and a half it needs to get to your first house but here saturn in your 12th house gives all this sort of pressure on your subconscious mind on your self-awareness you know because saturn is teaching you how to listen to yourself to your intuition if you've never done so and most aries <laughs> they usually don't uh you know saturn came in like uh, a year and a half ago and gave you sort of this a period where you've been mm, deeply um letting yourself listen to your intuition and saturn was making you to notice things within yourself within like let's say spiritual growth happening here because 12 house is all about our spirituality is the last house is the house of secrets now saturn like you know it's behind the doors like whatever is happening that we don't show to the world it's exactly 12th house now saturn there might be giving you also a sort of you know alone time like working on some project by yourself in solitude in privacy if, like hiding from the whole world you might be actually working on some project since i don't know you might have been working since like uh, a year and a half ago and it's still continuing and it will stay that way uh until next year still and um you know uh, because it's behind the doors as i said you know, or it might give you sort of a lot of healing process because 12 house is all about our traumas childhood traumas you might be uh, going through some therapies psychological sessions with therapists and all these things you know taking up actually good care around your uh, subconscious mind around your yourself actually um spiritual self and saturn here is the perfect teacher sometimes it's very harsh but after saturn finishes the transit your 12th house you will be totally new person and a person who knows um what is it to listen to yourself your intuition to follow your true path to follow your true calling in this life what you meant to do <laughs> in this life now november 15 the same day saturn goes direct right after a few hours we have full moon happening in your house of money second house earning house earning income house now full moons are all about sort of they are bringing like you know it's a it's a full moon and there was a story and now it's coming to conclusion usually it's like this or full moon they put some you know um light into some situation they sort of reveal some situation right to your face that you might have been not noticing let's say or just ignoring now but which is which is now very important now full moon happening in your second house you know will conjunct uranus now uranus is amazing surprise planet shock planet and <laughs> it will perfectly will you know will be in tight conjunction with full moon together meaning you know blending their powers it's amazing it could be sort of a shocking situation there happening by the second half of november that you won't ever 
um, you know, know or you won't ever guess, actually, because Uranus loves to act exactly that way. We are never able to guess what is it bringing. And because it's a tight conjunction, this full moon might crazy, you know, greatly surprise you. And this full moon is amazingly positive one. That's why I believe that this full moon has positive surprise for you in terms of your money. It might be a new job, actually, if you've been going cycles of interviews, let's say, and you haven't expected, actually, that you will be accepted. But now you might receive around this full moon a job offer. And that will actually put your name on a list because Pluto will support that full moon from your 10th house. And 10th house is the house of career, is the highest house, like CEO and uh, manager's house. Now, it might be that position will be sort of that level, like chief level, and your reputation, your uh, this sort of influence might rise. Now, Neptune also will support that full moon together with Uranus, but Neptune is a planet, you know, it's, it's, it's the planet of magic, but it will be situated in your 12th house. So it might actually involve you to relocate somewhere, to somewhere far, somewhere abroad. Um, sort of that job offer might come with relocation package. Now, um, you know, because it's happening in your second house, either it might be a job offer or a position upgrade within your company if you're not changing the, you know, companies. And something which is actually, you know, whatever is happening there, it's related to your wish and dream. Something that you've been wishing for a long time coming to a, a fruit finally, coming to life, and you won't expect it actually. <laughs> so try to remember what sort of wishes you had long, long time ago. Let's say, better to say 10 years ago, because that thing is happening now. And second house is also all about values. You know, it's not only about money, but it's also about our self esteem our uh, resources like what kind of resources we have energy food all this thing so for some of you it might be actually sort of you might be changing your diet like uh, eating habits for some of you it might be your self-esteem receiving boost like self-worth all of a sudden by the way you won't expect it and for some of you it might be uh, about your values what you value in life what are your priorities and those priorities sort of have a shocking shift happening here around this full moon and second house is also material possessions expensive gifts it might be that you might receive some sort of a very expensive gift like a house <laughs> or a car like luxurious car or some sort of jewelry or whatever is that like very valuable uh, sort of um expensive thing like material thing might come into your life um you know in a happy surprise sort of could be now november 19 another big thing happening one of the hugest things of our century <laughs> november 19 will mark the day when pluto will move into your 11th house for a long long 20 years and it won't be ever back to uh, your 10th house in our lifetime nobody who are alive will see pluto again in the 10th house your 10th house my dear aries now Pluto in Aquarius is totally new. It's not even a new chapter, you know, it's a new decade. It's a new sort of a story there because Pluto uh, spent for the last like 15 to 16 years in your 10th house, uh, transforming your vision of your like sort of career. What is a social status for you? What is a career for you? What sort of achievements you want and all the stuff, you know, you might have been meet also uh, met sort of a lot of people who are in a high position, like, uh, uh, a lot of influential people, a lot of, um, I don't know, those people who have money because Pluto is all about big money, like big, big chunks of money. It's not small money planet. <laughs> and Pluto now moving into your 11th house for the next 20 years. Now, all the next 20 years, it will transform your wishes and future, you know, shifting, actually. You, you might, you know, during those 20 years, change your dreams and wishes so many times. But you will, at the end of those 20 years, you will for sure know, or even by mid of those 20 years, you will for sure know which wishes and dreams are true to your heart and which are just sort of imposed from others or you've just uh, sort of uh, influenced by others. And Pluto will give you power to actually recognize what are your true dreams and what are what is that you know future picture 
for yourself because 11th house is all about future and 11th house it's a very like expansive like broadening house and it's all about our friendships Pluto might give you here a lot of influential friends like big bosses CEOs or celebrities or someone who has money and power who has influence and those people might come in contact might become your friends you might enter into this kind of higher sort of society and you might have this kind of friends you know you might acquire these friends during the next 20 years now i'll make the whole totally like separate video about pluto in aquarius it's amazing one they're happening so stay tuned for that in november 26 mercury mercury goes retrograde our lovely mercury <laughs> third time going retrograde final time this year uh in your ninth house now ninth house is all about travel and it's all about education and mercury retrograde meaning moving backwards or slowing down and mercury is the planet of communication mind uh, writing reading all the things that we you know our mind needs to be sharp when we work when we book tickets especially <laughs> especially for you because it's happening in your ninth house and ninth house is all about travel here by the end of november i would suggest you to double check or even triple check your tickets your destination the dates all the details because mercury is notorious and you know messing up things uh especially related to all things information all things technology and uh, during mercury retrograde is not advisable to do any plastic surgeries any planned surgeries or also buying like technical stuff appliances all things that has chip in it um because they might you know all the, these things might just uh sort of spark your interest but after buying them you might sort of um, not like it or they might have some sort of issue there like uh, easily broken all this stuff like with mercury retrograde these things happen mixing up the dates and like hotels, flights, you know, being late to hotels, I mean, to your flights and for check-ins and all the stuff, you know, because Mercury uh, goes retrograde and during this period is better to, uh, you know, double and triple check all the details. Now, this was your horoscope for November, my dear Aries. Don't forget to check your rising sign and moon sign because mostly, you know, most of the time rising sign is very strong and we need to check exactly that. But for some people, it might be moon, depending on the time when you were born. So don't forget to check those uh, signs too. Love you all. Bye-bye.